The Dan Wesson TCP came to me as an assignment gun for a Guns America review. And the first time I had it out at the range, my first impulse was not, gee, I want to keep this gun. Um, there is a break-in required, and you know, like, like me, most of you probably have gotten used to so many of the ready-to-go out-of-the-box, uh, you know, Wonder 9s and polymers and, and things that really don't require any break-in because their tolerances are so loose. Uh, this is a bit of a different uh, animal, and it, you know, it reminded me that, hey, you know, a good quality 1911 that is built to tight tolerances does require a bit of a break-in. Happy to say that by the end of that review period, by the end of my testing, it was broken in nicely, and I decided that I liked it so much, I was going to buy it. So I did. So here it is. This is the post-review review of the Dan Wesson TCP. It is a 4-inch commander-sized, that's what the C in TCP stands for, 1911, chambered as 1911s should be in 45 ACP. So I haven't shot it in a little while. I want to have a little bit of fun with it. I'll talk to you about it while I'm doing that. So for starters, Gun comes with two magazines. Eight rounders, of course. Got that brass sight out front. U-notch, blackout sight in the rear. Very good sight picture. The two magazines it comes with are very good quality. They are Dan Wesson stamped magazines. Don't know if they make them in-house or contract that out. But they were good. I had zero problems with the two magazines that comes with the gun that comes with the gun. <laughs> but I did have some anomalies with other magazines, various others. So in the course of today's work, I'm going to run through some of those other magazines and see how they're performing. For the record, right now I'm shooting Arms Corps 230 grain ball. I like the safety. It's got just the right amount of, you know, just the right amount of resistance. Uh, easy on, easy off, but not so easy that you're accidentally going to push it in either direction. I like that a lot. It is not an ambidextrous safety. It is made for the right-handed shooter only. Luckily for me, I woke up this morning, as I do every morning, right-handed. Trigger's nice. It's got that flat face. They call it a K-type trigger. And looking at it, you can see where it gets that name. But it is a nice trigger. It's got a great touch. It's an alloy frame, so the gun is light. I think it's about 32 ounces total if memory serves. Okay, this is a Wilson Combat magazine. Wilson Combat 8-round magazine. I'll give that one a try.
Okay, excellent. No problems at all with the Wilson Combat. Cobra Mag. This has always been one of my favorite magazines for a 1911. And it looks very similar to the Dan Wesson magazines. Almost made me wonder at first glance if they didn't contract Cobra Mag to make their mags for them. I do not know the answer to that. But I think I may have had some problems, some malfunctions. Every once in a while I would get a feeding problem with certain mags. All right, no problems, I'm happy to say. That's something else that can also be a little bit prone to a break-in period too. So that could improve as uh, the more I shoot this gun, the more compatibility I may find with magazines because things start to uh, loosen up just a little bit. This is, this is a Mechgar magazine. I think this was the one that I may have had the most problems with. This gun has that bull barrel. It's a bushingless design. Has a flat, uh, flat wire, flat recoil spring, and full length guide rod. Talk about the grips in a minute. All right. Five for five with the magazines, and I'm happy about that. That was 40 rounds of arms core, 230 grain ball. That target's 10 yards away, and uh, other than me running my mouth and not paying attention, throwing a couple low, that looks good. I walked 47 miles of barbed wire. Got a Cobra mag for a necktie. Who do you love? Okay, I promised I would talk about the grips and I'm talking about the grips. I figured this would be a little better format where it's less noisy and we can get a better look at them. These are the G10 grips that come on the TCP and they're a very interesting pattern. When I first saw them, I thought they probably weren't going to provide a whole lot of traction. They've got this sort of, I don't know, I, I keep thinking basket weave type of design. That's really not very accurate, but for whatever reason, that's where my mind goes when I see that. They're very, actually very effective. Uh, what I like about them are that, number one, they're, they're pretty thin. You can see right there, they don't really add a whole lot. To the width of the gun and they sort of mimic the cut on the slide where you've got all straight angular cut on the slide we don't have a round top slide we've got that angular cut well they kind of mimic that you can see in their shape as well sort of squared off angled cuts but then you have these raised angled lines and they provide nice traction uh, no complaints whatsoever at the same time what I liked about them was that they're not overly aggressive. They don't bite into your hands, cause you any discomfort when you grip the pistol, even when you grip it very hard or shoot for an extended period of time. So I think they did a nice job in choosing these grips. And again, that's a G10 material. And it just goes well with the, uh, the design of the pistol. It goes well with the less is more sort of look of the pistol as well.
Okay, I've moved on now to shooting mostly hand load ammo. If that changes, I'll let you know, but I do like to be transparent about that because if you see a malfunction, it could be the ammo more so than the gun or the magazine. I do trust my hand loads, but hey, they're still hand loads. Wilson Combat Magazine. Slide didn't lock back. I've had that happen with a couple of different magazines with this gun. Yep, doesn't want to lock back. This gun was designed and built to be ideal for concealed carry. And I think if you want to carry a 1911, this one is extremely well suited to that. And that means to me, you need to practice shooting it strong hand only and even weak hand only. But you probably should also practice seating the magazine. <laughs> Okay, so I didn't, I didn't seat my magazine all the way and it fell out onto the ground like they tend to do when you don't seat them all the way. So now it's, full, now it's all full of sand. Let's see how it runs full of sand. Gun shoots really well, strong hand only. It's a very natural pointer because it's a 1911, and they are, but it's got a nice balance to it. It's not real fatiguing to hold it out there because that 32 ounces is pretty light, and the recoil, extremely manageable. Now I'm really going to put things to the test. I'm going to go weak hand only with the Mechgar magazine. Uh-oh. There's one. <laughs> Could be a crimp issue with this round, so I'm going to set it aside. Uh -oh. One of the other things that's different about the TCP compared to a lot of 1911s that you may be familiar with is it's a bushingless barrel, and it's a... Uh, conical shaped you can see that funnel shape there much wider and then tapers back as it goes back it's a basically a bull barrel and the guide rod is a full length steel guide rod and it has a flat spring on it so it's a very nice recoil spring and guide rod system because it's a bushingless barrel field stripping is a little bit easier which is nice one other thing that I don't know if I can get you to see right in here. If not, I'll insert a photograph. But uh, here's the ramp. Yeah, we can just get it to where we can just see it right there. It really has a full length ramp. So rather than the traditional 1911 style ramp that is very abbreviated, this has a full overall quality of the pistol is extremely good very very good you can see just looking at it here that the finish on the material is fantastic I don't know what the finish is it's a nice matte very satiny type of aesthetic which I like but I I like the plainness there's no other than this very small TCP right here there's no ornamentation which I like and I like the absence of the forward serrations actually on this even though the T stands for tactical they did not put the front grabby things out there and I think it looks much better for it, it does have a nice serrated top on the slide for anti-glare and also for a nice aesthetic look but the quality is definitely there everywhere you look on the pistol Here's a look at that trigger, that flat trigger that I talked about. It has a flat face. They call it a K style trigger, and I think you can see the outline of the letter K right there. And that's why they call it that. There's a nice serrated face on the trigger right there, so once you get your finger placed on there, it doesn't slide around. That's good for match shooters.
One thing that's still not working completely is the slide stop and it seems like it might be related to certain magazines uh, but it does happen with a variety of different magazines and that is that the slide doesn't always lock back after the last round is fired. Um, and I, I think it's probably just a matter of the, the part being really close as far as its adjustment. Let me demonstrate. I have a magazine in the gun right now and it's empty. So I'm just going to rack the slide open. Okay, and it did catch. But if you look, and you can see I didn't touch that or tamper with it, you can see that it's just barely catching it. You know, you've got like a fingernail worth. So that's when it does lock back and again just barely catching right there so we don't have a whole lot of extra forgiveness uh, and if the follower in a particular magazine is at a slightly different angle or you know whatever the case might be it's very likely not to engage that slide stop so that's really like the one downside that continues to uh, to be iffy it's not a big deal uh, as a range gun, but if it were going to be a carry gun, then that's something I would be concerned with. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Thanks as always for watching, and thanks as always to my Patreon supporters. If you're wondering why I didn't go into incredible detail, it's because I've already done a very thorough review on Guns America, and you can look right here for a link for that. So there's another look at the Dan Wesson TCP in 45 ACP. It's also available in 9mm. See you soon.